Good people YouTube, I'm the Watch Idiot, and I've got here a very surprising watch. You know, surprising on many levels because not only is the design of the watch surprising, but I'm also kind of surprised by how much I am, you know, actually loving this watch. And the watch in question here is the Brew Metric, and you can instantly see that this is, you know, far from being a normal watch because of the, you know, asymmetric dial layout and the use of bright pops of color. Those two things, if done badly, can look absolutely terrible but over here i mean it's pretty much spot on so in this video i'm going to get into you know why i've fallen hard for this watch you know by going through all the different aspects of the watch you know including you know one aspect of the bracelet that really really bothers me and i'm also going to talk about how the watch wears and how it looks on the wrist because the numbers on paper do not translate to real life and also i think the watch is for sale i mean yeah i mean yeah, it is. It is for sale. I mean, it is for sale. I, I have a feeling that I'm going to regret it later on. But yes, it is available for sale for what I paid for it, which was, you know, four and thirty four dollars plus insured shipping costs, you know, wherever you are at that point. Yeah, which is, you know, I think, you know, more than fair, you know, considering that this is a watch that's sold out and is usually reselling for way over stickers. So, uh, yeah, if you're interested, you know, send me an email at the watch idiot at gmail dot com with your shipping zip code so that I can get a quote going right off the bat over there but uh, yeah, yeah now let's get into it so let's do the numbers first because yeah the dimensions as i mentioned are pretty misleading because it's a 36 millimeter wide watch with 19.5 millimeter lugs which i will definitely be getting into later on but uh yeah and the top of the bracelet is 26.5 millimeters tapering intensely down to 16 millimeters at the clasp. And the lug to lug is 41.6 millimeters. The 36 millimeter dimension is gonna be worrying to many of you, but it's not an issue because this has a squarish design and square cases will always wear larger than circular cases of the same dimension, you know, like you see here with the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 36, which I was worried because for me, the PRX wears a bit too big in terms of visual footprint because it's 40 millimeters and the bracelet tapers from there but this being 36 millimeters and going down from there it works out much better you know I don't think it, I would have gotten it if it was 40 millimeters but also a big part of this is the intense taper there's just simply less metal giving the metric a smaller footprint compared to the Tissot which has a less intense taper and more metal for that matter and on the wrist, you know, it has its own presence and never for a moment did I think that I was wearing a 36 millimeter watch in the traditional sense, just especially just because of how comfy it is on the wrist and how well everything flows together on the wrist. And for me, it has sort of like the same visual presence as my Black 58, you know, which by the way is for sale. Do the same stuff, email me with the shipping zip code and stuff like that. Yeah, the metric is really just like unlike anything I've seen before. I mean, to me, like I said before, it's giving the sort of like Glasuta original 70s chronograph panorama date vibes, a watch that I really, really like. Oh, and I guess I should mention that the movement is a Mecha Quartz chronograph movement. So it, yeah, feels nice and mechanical in use, but you have the practicality and the thinness that comes from a quartz movement. So yeah, for an occasional watch like this, you know, that's perfect for me. Okay, so before we get into the dial layout, I wanna talk about the colors because the colors are awesome. I mean, I love pops of colors, you know, in all things, and to get multiple pops of color in one thing downright, I mean, it's a tough thing to do and the metric got it right. So here we have a mint green chapter ring, which isn't in your face, but when you look at it, you can see it on the side. And it, but the cool detail is that the bottom section between 25 and 35 is yellow because that's the range for a good pull of espresso. So, you know, I, I don't make coffee. You know, caffeine does absolutely nothing for me. Zero effect. I mean, I just drink coffee just because it tastes nice and whatnot. But this little detail is just so cool because I love it when watches have, you know, specific and weird bits of utility like the telemeter scale or, you know, the pulse pulsometer or, you know, vintage parking timers and now the espresso timer because I love knowing that a watch was made to make a task easy and that kind of makes watches far less useless the way I see it. So then we have the yellow on the minute hand and the hour hand and orange on the chronograph seconds hand and the 30 minute sub dial. And yeah, all these bright colors are done right in that they aren't too saturated and they seem to complement each other as well while also 
contrasting each other for that sort of like whimsical look, I guess you could say. So the dial layout is the main thing you see here, and it's on the weirder side, but you know, I, I like it that way. The sub dial, especially at the nine is, an interesting spot because it's higher up than you would think and you know I really don't think that this watch would have worked with traditionally placed six and nine o'clock sub dials you know that would have just left too much space at the top especially if the coffee bean logo stays at three and but you know with this placement it just feels just enough of the top just to make that three o'clock coffee bean logo work and there's still empty space but you know this is supposed to be an asymmetrical watch so yeah this works out for me and i know that some people aren't gonna like the 430 date placement and it's definitely a risky spot and it fails hard a lot of the times but it's got a color matched window so kind of fades into the background a bit and i actually like the size of the window and that it's at the 430 position because it adds to the sort of asymmetrical and kind of crazy vibe to the watch but it's not perfectly in the middle of the markers which is down to the movement which is for sure gonna bother some people and it would have bothered me had this whole watch not been so asymmetrical i mean i guess that's an excuse for everything i guess oh and then also the thing that i remembered is that they didn't overdo it because the dial is a simple matte black dial and at one point i was like oh i wish they kind of had like a fertile gold brush like they do on the silver dial but you know i don't have an issue that it doesn't have it because that could have potentially just been a little bit too much also the depth is really great sub dials are sunken in and within the sub dials there's two different finishes and then they have my favorite sort of indices you know the polished applied indices that are three-dimensional and that reflect light and they have loom in there as well so, i mean it's a nice bit of design flair without being too much and the boldness of the indices you know help keep the balance of the empty section in check because it maintains sort of a strong visual element along the edges just to bring things a little bit back in oh and this is kind of part of the dial i guess but there's a sort of mirror filling out the edges beyond the dial up to the case and this is something i hadn't noticed before in pictures or anything like that but it was a very pleasant surprise because it adds yet another subtle yet interesting visual element because it can go light and it can go dark depending on where you are just in a way that polished metal can't but does that mean that you can blind yourself while driving yeah i mean it can so uh, yeah watch out for that <laughs> So now on to the other main event, and that's the bracelet. And this is the first time that I've worn a bracelet like this. I mean, it's sort of a Speedle, Spidel, Spidel, I don't know how to say it, the bracelet. And I was worried about how it would look and flow in person, but it all turned out okay because it feels really smooth on the wrist and the brushing is well done. And a detail I love is that the edges of the bracelet have a sort of polished bevel, which adds just another level of refinement that is really great to see that I absolutely love seeing. This sort of single link bracelet design makes for like such a unique wearing experience. And while, you know, it would have, you know, looked great on pretty much any bracelet for that matter, I mean, this one makes it special even if it does pull you know hairs occasionally i mean which is irritating but you know it's not like a deal breaker it's not ruinous or something like that but what is more irritating is that the the 20 millimeter lugs are actually 19.5 millimeters which doesn't sound like a big deal because normally you just be able to squeeze in a strap or something like that, but pretty much you can't do it with the vast majority of straps and also a lot of 20 millimeter spring bars, you know, kind of like the ones on the Barton straps. But all that that I just said right now just means that there's no point in it being, you know, 20 millimeters, you know, and given the awkward end link that kind of ruins the flow. I would have preferred them just ditching the 20 millimeter lugs for something that suits the flow of the bracelet more, like having a fixed link at the end, you know, to seam seamlessly integrate the case and the bracelet instead of halfway look that isn't bad necessarily, but it's not ideal for me at all. And given the 41 millimeter lug to lug, folks with smaller wrists would still be able to wear it with that fixed link. Okay, now onto the case. And yeah, the case is simple, but very well executed. I mean, the brushing is well done, especially on the case sides. And it's got a polished bevel running along the top of the case, which is one of my absolute favorite things to see on pretty much any watch. I mean, I'm an absolute sucker for that kind of detail every single time I see it. Oh, and the bezel is tall and once again, it's well finished with a sort of vertical sunburst finish on the sides and a sort of, in a vertical 
finish on the top of the bezel. So yeah, this bezel alongside the finished mid case and the good looking crown and the chronograph pushers, you know, make for a really well put watch that is way more than just the sum of its parts. So there you have it. Let me know what you think about the watch because it is polarizing. And of course, if you want to buy the watch, email me. All the information is in the description and beforehand over there at the watch idiot at gmail.com and uh, yeah hit the like button subscribe button all the good buttons over there it helps the channel a bunch and uh, yeah until next time good day